Hello, my friends, Dr. Kazim once again. Uh, uh, recently, I was asked by one of my students that uh, can you just uh, tell us how we can um, quickly differentiate between the different types of rickets and um, how we can do it uh, on the basis of uh, biochemical analysis. So uh, it's quite simple as far as differential diagnosis of rickets is concerned. Uh, remember, to diagnose rickets, you have a clinical criteria and you have got a biochemical criteria. So uh, the clinical criteria is that usually uh, these kids could be having what we call as subclinical rickets or uh, overt rickets. And subclinicals or covert rickets, the child uh, might not be having full-blown uh, clinical features of rickets, but usually uh, they have got what we call as arrested growth. So they may be of short stature. They are usually uh, more predisposed to uh, infectious uh, conditions, like they might be having repeated chest infections. and uh, they usually uh, have got uh, low energy levels as well. Uh, they get tired very easily. Uh, their muscle uh, power is it's not that high as compared to their normal peers. Uh, then you have got the uh, what we call as uh, frank rickets, in which uh, kids have got overt uh, clinical signs and symptoms, like they might be having craniotabies, uh, which is deformity of the skull. They might be having uh, uh, prominent ribs, uh, pigeon chest, uh, Harrison sulci a rachitic rosary and they might be having bow, uh, both legs as well and if you do uh, x-rays of the wrist you'll be seeing fraying and uh, cupping and splaying of the of the metaphysial ends of the long bones nevertheless usually as far as biochemical um, uh, tests are, con are, are concerned uh, they not only uh, confirm the diagnosis they also give you um, very good indication of uh, the differential diagnosis of uh, rickets as well. So normally we start with uh, the burn profile, which looks at the calcium, uh, phosphorus, and alkaline phosphatase. Uh, once we uh, have done these things, we can do a few more like specialized tests, like looking at the parathormone level, looking at the different uh, types of vitamin D uh, levels in the blood, and we also look at the urine uh, phosphorus, and we can finally we can look at uh, the blood uh, pH as well. So remember, as far as the types of rickets are concerned, so uh, rickets can uh, be nutritional rickets. It can be rickets uh, which uh, occurs due to renal tubular acidosis. And then we have got the vitamin D-dependent rickets, which is again of two types, vitamin D-dependent rickets type 1 and vitamin D-dependent uh, rickets type 2. And then we have got the vitamin D-resistant rickets, which is also known as the x lake hypophosphatemic rickets. And we can have um, secondary rickets in chronic renal failure as well. So remember, uh, when we do the basic uh, biochemical profile, remember calcium, uh, phosphates, and alkaline phosphatase. So uh, calcium, uh, usually, uh, you will be finding it either uh, low or just what we call as the normal low levels, where the uh, calcium level is normal, but is on the lower side of the, of the normal. Uh, phosphorus uh, or phosphates is in, uh, invariably is always low in most of these conditions, except uh, in chronic renal failure, where you would get high phosphate levels. So remember, if you get uh, phosphate high in your uh, bone profile, there's only one clinical condition that can give you high phosphate levels, and that is chronic renal failure. So rickets, which is caused by secondary, uh, secondary rickets, which is caused by chronic renal failure, you would always get a high uh, phosphate levels. So only one condition which gives you high phosphate, remember that is chronic renal failure. In all the other conditions, you would be either having low or normal calcium and a low phosphate. Um, fine. In nutritional rickets, you get uh, either a low or a normal uh, calcium. You get low phosphates. Your alkaline uh, phosphatase is always high, as is alkaline phosphatase is usually high in all, all, almost all the types of rickets. Uh, then if you look at the uh, parathyroid hormone, parathyroid hormone would always be elevated because of the low levels of uh, phosphate and calcium. Uh, the parathormone is secondarily uh, activated and um, the parathyroid glands secrete a lot of uh, PTH and that's why the levels goes high. As far as vitamin D levels are concerned, we normally do uh, two types of assays. One is 25-hydroxy uh, cholecalciferol and the other is 125-dihydroxy cholecalciferol. So um, uh, they are quite expensive. So usually we start with 25-hydroxy cholecalciferol and then we do the uh, 125 assay as well. Now, uh, low 25-hydroxy cholecalciferol uh, actually is uh, a of uh, nutritional rickets. 
and with that you will be getting low uh, urinary phosphates and uh, the bicarbonate levels will be the other condition in which you get uh, low 25 uh, uh, hydroxycholecalciferol is uh, renal tubular acidosis as well um, and but remember in renal tubular acidosis you will get a low uh, blood ph so there will be a picture of a chronic metabolic acidosis and usually the urinary phosphorus loss is quite high in that. So then, when that, in, 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 like, in, 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 with that way, you can differentiate between uh, denutritional rickets and renal tubular acidosis. Now, vitamin D uh, dependent rickets. Again, there are two types: uh, type one and type two. So, uh, in type one, uh, what happens is that there is problem with the uh, with the secondary conversion of. Uh, there's a problem in the conversion of. Uh, to 25 hydroxycholecalciferol into 125. So what you'll be uh, getting is uh, you get a very high level of 25 hydroxycholecalciferol, but you've got a low level of 125 hydroxy dihydroxycholecalciferol simply because the conversion is low. So obviously, as the conversion of 25 hydroxycholecalciferol is blocked, and it cannot be converted into 125, so you'll get more of 25 hydroxy and less of 125. So that in a picture of uh, high alkaline phosphatase, low calcium, low phosphate is actually pathognomonic or vitamin D resistant rickets type one. Now, vitamin D resistant rickets type two is because of the problem in the receptors. Um, that is a bit tricky. It's more common in the um, Arab ethnicity, and uh, usually clinically, you might find a bit of occipital alopecia in kids who are suffering with the vitamin D uh, dependent rickets. Uh, uh, type 2 and usually what you get in this particular case is a very high uh, 25 hydroxy uh, uh, cholecalciferol and 125 dihydroxy cholecal. so the levels of both of these 25 and 125 are quite high and as I said again you will be getting high PTH you'll be getting high alkaline phosphatase with a low uh, phosphate and low calcium and that is again a diagnostic of uh, vitamin D resistant rickets type 2 now, as far as X-link hypo hypophosphatemic rickets is concerned, again, here the problem is in the renal tubules. So it's a tubulopathy because uh, the phosphates uh, cannot be reabsorbed back in the renal tubules. So there is a lot of loss of uh, uh, renal loss of uh, phosphates. So what you get is that calcium is usually normal because there's no problem with the calcium, but there is actually loss of phosphates. You'll get a low phosphate, and with that, you get a, got a high uh, um, uh, what you call alkaline phosphatase. But again, there is only one condition in which the parathormone levels are normal when you are differentially diagnosing different types of rickets, and that is, is what we call it X link hypophosphatemic rickets. So you'll get a normal parathormone levels. Remember, in all the other conditions, the parathormone levels are quite high. There's only one condition in which you will get normal parathormone levels, and that is vitamin D resistant rickets. And then finally, renal failure. Chronic renal failure. Uh, can lead to uh, secondary rickets and again you get low calcium but the phosphate is high because the kidneys they cannot properly excrete obviously because of the uh, low level of functioning glomeruli uh, the phosphates cannot be properly excreted so there is a rise in serum phosphate level so you've got low calcium you've got high phosphates with that you've got uh, high parathormone levels as well high alkaline phosphatase and your serum bicarbonate usually is low because chronic renal failure can lead to um, acidosis as well. So just to summarize it, as I said, like uh, nutritional rickets, low calcium, low phosphate, high alkaline phosphatase. As far as calcium is concerned, in most of the cases, it would be either at the lower end of the normal or it would be low. There's only one condition in which the calcium would be normal and that is hypophosphatemic rickets. Similarly, the phosphorus, so in all these conditions, the phosphate or phosphorus would be low except renal failure in which you get a high phosphate levels. Alkaline phosphate is, is high in all of uh, the different, different types of rickets. Parathormal is high in most of the rickets except uh, um, X-link hypophosphatemic rickets. And as I said, vitamin D level, um, the, the assays of the different types of vitamin D levels, especially 25 hydroxy and 125 dihydroxy polycalciferol uh, can um, actually help you in, uh, you know, differentiating different types of rickets. As I said, in nutritional rickets, you've got low levels of 25 hydroxy polycalciferol. Um, in vitamin D uh, uh, type, vitamin D dependent rickets type one, you have got 
high 25 uh, hydroxycholic calciferol but low 125 in vitamin d dependent rickets type 2 you have got high levels of both 25 and 125 and in hyperphosphatemic rickets you have got uh, uh, normal 25 hydroxycholic and you've got uh, low uh, 125 hydroxycholic calciferol and a renal failure as i told you that uh, you would be having chronic metabolic acidosis you would be having uh, low or normal calcium but you would be having high phosphate levels so hope that helps thank you very much for listening to me bye